by going to www.foxy97.com or call in 267-807-9611, access code 266-590. Evangelist Renee Sellers is your host. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is Evangelist Renee Sellers of the Upper Room Outreach Ministries in Waycross, Georgia, where my pastor is Pastor Samuel Sellers III. And we're live this morning on this Motivational Monday morning. We have not been on Facebook for the last two weeks, but we're thankful that we are back live at five. And looks like some of you all are glad that we're back on Facebook. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. We're excited this morning, and we're going to share and kind of piggyback not recap this morning, but I am going to recap something I shared um, uh, before regarding the Holy Spirit and being led by the Holy Spirit. Because I asked a question on yesterday that when we are hearing from God and we are uh, receiving from God uh, and we're, we're following the leading of the Holy Spirit, should there be disagreement? Should there be disagreement? If God is speaking to me and the Lord is speaking to Sister Reed, should there be disagreement? I said there should not be disagreement because the Lord is not the author of confusion. I'm going to talk about what happens when God is speaking and there is disagreement. I'm going to share some reasons for the disagreement because in the Acts chapter 10, which we're going to just kind of mention Acts chapter 10 this morning, but we're going to be going to Acts chapter 16 and talking about that. But when the Lord is speaking to us, when the Holy Spirit is speaking, when we are uh, in the word of God, we should be getting the same interpretation. When the Lord is speaking to us, there should be no disagreement, but I'm going to share with you this morning why disagreement occurs, but that's not my main focus this morning. I'm talking from the subject because God said it, because God says so this morning. And I'm going to ask Evangelist Paul, uh, Pastor Wright, Pastor Wright, woman of God, open us up this morning with a word of prayer. And we're going to be pulling a nugget from Acts 10, but our main subject is coming from Acts 16, because God said it. God bless you, Pastor Wright. Thank you, Father Lord. God, we bless you today. We give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, God, for all your blessings and benefits that you daily load us with. Hallelujah. We glorify you. Thank you, Lord. Like and share. Awesome, God. Thank you, Lord. You are good all the time and all the time. You are good. You're Jehovah Rapha, I heal. Thank you, God. Jehovah Jireh, I provide. Thank you, love Lord. You that is so much more. And we love thank you, you today, Jesus. God. Thank you, Father, for thank loving you, Lord. us so much. That you gave your only begotten son. Thank you, God Lord. The God of whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Father, we thank you. Thank, thank you, Lord. Thank you for looking beyond our fault and seeing our need. We repent of all of our sins, Lord God. We empty out to you. We say less of us and more of more you. More of you, Jesus. Give us and feed us today, God, so we want no more. Use this your servant, Dr. Sellers, in a great and mighty way, thank Father, you, God. in the name of Jesus. If you open a mouth, God, you fill it. Thank in you, Jesus. Jesus name. We lift up Pastor Sellers, we lift up Upper Room Ministries, we lift up Command Your Morning, all the ministries on this call, Lord God. We commit this broadcast into your hands. We pray, God, that you let the words of her mouth and the meditation of her heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, her strength and redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen and glory be to God. We're going to be going to Acts 16, and then we're going to be looking at verses 6 through 10. But this is somewhat piggybacking. This is why this is important this morning to understand that it, how important it is for us to be led by the Holy Spirit in every decision that we make. Because we, we won't be confused about certain things. And even I uh, uh, recognize that there's something that I that I shared that I was, may have shared prematurely. And that happens. That happens. We want things to happen. We want things to move forward forward but we have to sometimes ladies and gentlemen you got to wait on the lord you got to wait on the lord and, and how do we learn the importance of waiting on the lord sometimes we learn by the mistakes that we made when we didn't wait on the lord or we did not uh listen take time to 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 listen to what the lord wanted us to do and, and i asked a question yesterday after ministering from acts chapter 10 and i, and I said this during the message 
that when the Lord is speaking to us, he has spoken clearly either through a vision or through his word. There will be no disagreement because God is not the author of confusion. We may not understand all the details, but there won't be disagreement among the people involved. Why is there disagreement even though the Lord is speaking? I asked somebody, I asked a couple people and one person said, well, there will be disagreement. But I asked the question, should there be disagreement when the Holy Spirit is speaking? I believe that if the people of God we're like Cornelius and Peter, more intentional about praying, continually praying about ceasing in among your family, among your church family. There won't be any disagreements because we're all spending time in the presence of God. We're all listening to the voice of God. If God has spoken clearly through a vision and, and he's spoken clearly through his word, there shouldn't be disagreement among his followers. There shouldn't be disagreement among members of the body of Christ. Disagreement comes because people may believe that this is what the Lord is saying. I believe this is what I heard or because of personal feelings and biases. We talked about that on yesterday because there's a lot of division among believers because of personal feelings and personal biases. And there is even disagreement regarding certain interpretations of the word of God. People disagree because they have different interpretation of the same word. And the reason there are so many different interpretations of the same word, the same gospel, is because of people's personal biases. It's not God. It's the same interpretation with many applications. There's only one interpretation with many applications. Why do people interpret scripture differently? It has a lot to do with the attitude of their heart. So we're going to talk from Acts chapter 16, and my subject this morning is because God said so. Do I need to say that again for those in the back of the room? The reason for so many different interpretations and so many different uh, beliefs and thoughts concerning the same word has to do, a lot to do with the heart of individuals. So we're live this morning I'm talking about because God said so. Let's go to Acts chapter 16. Verses 6 through 10. Acts chapter 16, verses 6 through 10. We're going to make mention of Acts chapter 10, but we're going to stay home right here. It says in the New King James Version, Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. What is my purpose for sharing from this subject? I want us to understand the importance of being led by the Holy Spirit. I want us to understand the importance of being a person of prayer and Cornelius and Peter, the instructions that the Lord gave to them through a vision. They didn't ask for it. The Lord gave Peter revelation and he also gave him instructions. He gave Cornelius instructions and, and each of them, neither one of them disagreed with what God told them, but Peter had a better understanding of the vision when he spent time with Cornelius. Let me help somebody this morning. And the Bible says, be slow to speak and quick to hear. Instead of being so quick to condemn a person when they say God said this to them, instead of being so quick to question whether or not it's God, have you taken the time to sit down and talk to the individual? One of the things that's missing in the body of Christ is communication, effective communication. In some places, there's no communication. But if we just sit down and have a conversation, we can eliminate a lot of frustration. I need somebody to write that down. I had a conversation with one of our leaders last week. And when I, after having the conversation, I realized that, that one of the reasons there was a misunderstanding is because we had not communicated. And the problem with, 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 with many of us, not only in the church, but in families, ladies and gentlemen, is you're having a misunderstanding because there is no communication. Why are we afraid to talk to people? We ain't scared of nothing else. <laughs> Let's get into the subject this morning. We ain't scared of nothing else. Why is it that it's so hard to just sit down and have a conversation? It says in verse number seven, after they had come to Mysia, uh, they tried to go to Bithynia, but the spirit did not permit them. 
Remember the, that they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. And then they, they had come to, they tried to go someplace else, but the spirit did not permit them. So that lets us know that the Holy Spirit, even though you want to do a good thing, it may not be a God thing. And verse number eight says, and they passing by Mysia uh, came down to Troas Listen, if I'm saying these wrong scholars, just charge to my head and not my heart. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A vision appeared to Cornelius. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in a vision. Peter received a vision. This lets us know the Lord speaks to us through visions, dreams, uh, different ways, his word. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. There stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. I want you to write this down if you're taking notes this morning. We never have to be confused or anxious about anything when we let the Holy Spirit lead. We never have to be uh, indecisive when we let the Holy Spirit lead. Uh, when we, we never have to wonder about should I go here or should I go there or should I do this or should I do that? Should I engage in this or should I go here when we let the Holy Spirit lead? And in one of our classes at Victorious Living Bible Institute entitled Biblical Theology, we define what is called pneumatology. The word pneumatology comes from uh, the words pneuma, which means wind or spirit. And then ology, which means the study of, psychology, uh, sociology, theology, the study of. And in theology, pneumatology is the study of what the Bible teaches about the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has several ministries, ladies and gentlemen, including drawing a sinner to salvation. And this is why Jesus rebuked the Pharisees and told them that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Because you're speaking against the source of salvation when you speak against the Holy Spirit. And this is why Jesus rebuked the Pharisees and, and warned them of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. You cannot be saved when you blaspheme against the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit draws the sinner to salvation and the Holy Spirit guides the decisions of the church. This is what we are seeing in the book of Acts. We are seeing the Holy Spirit guiding the decisions of the church. And I said this not too long ago. How is it that we are leaders in the Lord's church and we're not letting the Holy Spirit lead? We're leading based on our flesh, on what we want, instead of letting the Holy Spirit lead. This is the Lord's church. And, and if we're going to be effective in leading in his church, then we have got to let Holy Spirit lead. How often do we put things in place in church and we never heard from God? We just felt we, you know, this is a good thing. This is a good idea. This is my idea. This is not a God thing. This is a me thing. And then we wonder why it didn't work out. We wonder why there was so much chaos. We wonder why, why some people didn't get on board. And, and I want to talk to us this morning about allowing the Holy Spirit to guide our decisions, no matter what decisions you're making. Marital decisions, financial decisions, whatever decision, somebody write this on Facebook, let the Holy Spirit lead. I need you to like and share if you're on Facebook this morning, share this with your Facebook friends and encourage yourself and your neighbor, let the Holy Spirit lead. This is what happened with Paul and Silas, Pastor Sellers this morning, and every leader can learn something from this, their experience. Holy Spirit forbid them to go preach the word in Asia. But is listen, somebody may say, well, wouldn't it be a good thing to go preach in another city? I'm going to preach the word. It, it doesn't matter where I go. It doesn't matter where it is. Wouldn't it be okay for me to go to Los Angeles instead of Waycross? Listen, can, can I go to Atlanta instead of Macon? Come on. While Paul was doing ministry, think about your personal decisions. Today, I want you to start being more intentional 
about seeking God. Listen, this is not just for you. This is for all of us. We need to be more intentional about seeking God before we make a move on anything, ladies and gentlemen. Because when God is ordering your steps, you win every time. I need you to write that down this morning. When God is ordering your steps, you win. It's going to prosper. It's going to be a success. You don't have to worry about provision. You don't have to worry about the money coming in. When God is ordering your steps, whether you are starting a church or starting a business, Business. When God is ordering your steps, you're going to prosper because the Lord is not going to put you into, listen, he's, listen, anything he allows, listen, is going to be for his glory. Let me just put it that way. Anything the Lord allows is going to be for his glory. It's going to, it may benefit you, but it's going to be for the glory of, of God. Holy Spirit helps guide the decisions of every believer. Jesus told the disciples that if he didn't leave, the helper couldn't come. That's right. Order my steps, Mr. Miss Janice. Somebody ought to put that in the heart on, on Facebook. And if you're taking notes this morning, you're not on Facebook, but you're taking notes. I need you to put in big, bold letters. Lord, order my steps. Order my steps in the name of Jesus because I want to do those things that you would have me to do. I have friends that won't even go preach certain places unless the Lord tells them. I mean, they're adamant that I'm not even I'm not coming <laughs> even if you invite me. <laughs> Unless the Lord says so. And that is good practice. Because we notice Paul wanted to preach one place. But the Holy Spirit wouldn't let them go. We got to be open to Holy Spirit leading. Because everything God directs and we obey. Will always bring glory to his name. And at the end of the day. Pleasing God should be our main focus. It's not about being a people pleaser. It's about pleasing God. Somebody write that down this morning. It's about pleasing God. Hashtag that on Facebook. It's about pleasing God. And notice in the text that Paul was forbidden two times from going where he wanted to go. Let's look at Acts chapter 16 and verse number six and seven, reading from the CEV. Paul and his friends went through Phrygia and Galatia. But the Holy Spirit would not let them preach in Asia. After they arrived in Mysia, they tried to go to Bithynia. But the Spirit of Jesus would not let them. <laughs> One of the ways the Holy Spirit guides us is through what is called illumination. Somebody write down illumination this morning. And illumination helps us understand and apply biblical truths to everyday lives. Holy Spirit will put in us a burden for something, ladies and gentlemen, a burden to do something, and that burden will not go away. Come on, somebody. What has Holy Spirit put in you a burden to do? When it's the Holy Spirit, that burden will not go away, and that's when we have to be still in the presence of God and ask Him for clear direction. There are moments like in Acts chapter 10, when the angel of the Lord spoke to Cornelius and told him to send for Simon Peter, to go to Joppa and send for Simon Peter. When the angel spoke in the vision, he explained, Cornelius explained to his people what occurred and prepared them to go. It doesn't say that Cornelius questioned what he saw. But it does show that he obeyed what he heard. Come on, somebody. It doesn't say in Acts chapter 10 that Cornelius questioned what he saw. He didn't question what he heard. But the scripture does let us know that he obeyed what he heard. I need you to write this down. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Peter, on the other hand, also received the vision. We're going to Acts chapter 10. He also received the vision. And because of what God revealed to him went against what he always believed. This is where people get in trouble. When you, when the Holy Spirit is speaking to you or the word is released to you and instead of us responding to what the Lord is saying, we're still held back because of what we believe. This is why there's disagreement, ladies and gentlemen. Personal beliefs, personal biases, personal feelings get in the way of what God is trying to do in our lives. This is what leads to disagreement among people. And Peter, watch this now, but Peter, watch this, obeyed the voice of God, even though he did not fully understand what the Lord was saying. He obeyed the voice of God, even though he did, could not fully comprehend how the Lord is telling him to get up, rise, eat and eat whatever you want to eat. He didn't understand this because his focus was on the dietary laws of the Old Testament laws of Moses. It went against what he believed. 
And, and when there is disagreement in families and there is disagreement in the church, a lot of times people disagree because it goes against what they believe. Come on, somebody. So Peter obeyed the voice of God, even though he didn't fully understand it. And I want to encourage somebody this morning. When the Lord says go, go, even when you don't fully understand. But it, listen, it was not until he arrived at Cornelius' house. And I looked into this deeper this morning, Pastor Sellers. It wasn't until he arrived at Cornelius' house and took time to listen to how God spoke to Cornelius. The same God that the Jews worship is the same God that spoke to a Gentile. Ladies and gentlemen, the same God that spoke to Peter is the same God that spoke to Cornelius, ladies and gentlemen. And watch this now. It wasn't until Peter took time to listen to how God spoke to Cornelius through a vision that he understood the vision God had given him. He finally understood the vision that God had given him. He finally understood that God was not looking at nationality. God was looking at the heart. Somebody needs to write that down this morning because there was an issue between the Jews and the Gentiles. The Jews wasn't even supposed to eat with the Gentiles, but God was showing Peter something different. He did not fully understand it. He didn't, he, it didn't stop him from obeying God, but he didn't fully understand it until he had a conversation with Cornelius. And ladies and gentlemen, there are some things you will not fully understand until you start having some conversations. In the New Living Translation, of Acts 10 34 Peter says this to Cornelius I see very clearly that the Jews are not God's only favorites I get it now I understand it now because the same God that spoke to you Cornelius is the same God that spoke to me come on somebody he shows no partiality ladies and gentlemen so now Peter understood that God is, is trying to bridge the gap listen between the Jews and the Gentiles take that the gospel is for everybody going back to Acts number 6 Acts 16 Acts 16 and 9 says and the vision appeared to Paul in the night there stood a man of Macedonia and prayed him saying come over to Macedonia and help us. And after he has seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us for to preach the gospel unto them. In this vision, Paul was given clear direction that Macedonia was where they needed to be. Sometimes we think we'll be more effective someplace else, but wherever God sends you, that's where you are most needed. Come on, somebody. Wherever the Holy Spirit sends you, you might want to be someplace else, but that doesn't mean that's where God wants you to be. Let me say that again. You, you might want to be someplace else and, and, or you might not want to go at all, but that doesn't mean that that's what God has for you. One of the ways that God speaks to us, Brother Lacey, is, is, is through dreams and, and visions. And I always encourage people to write down what the Lord is saying. If you are a dreamer this morning, it's important for you to keep a notepad or a journal by your bed. Write down the date that you received the dream and the date that it came to pass. Because oftentimes there'll be a strategic timing in the date that it was revealed to you in a dream and the date that it comes to pass. And that timing will have a specific meaning. I'm not going to get into some of the dreams God has given to me and the timing, the specific timing that they came to pass. It, it, there's a meaning behind this. And in Acts chapter 10, when, when the angel of the Lord called Cornelius, I said this yesterday, when the Lord calls your name, he's getting ready to give you instructions. When, when he says, listen, when he calls you out, he's getting ready to give you instructions. So put a, if you are a dreamer, keep a journal by your bed. In Acts chapter nine, Ananias was guided by a vision. In Acts chapter 10, Cornelius and Peter was guided by visions. In Acts chapter 16 and in Acts chapter 18, we'll get that later. Pete Paul was guided by a vision. He guided prophets. The Lord guided the early church. And ladies and gentlemen, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is still guiding us today. Write this down. The Lord is guiding me today. God will also use other believers 
to give guidance through godly counsel. Uh huh. Through the counsel of his word, ladies and gentlemen, through biblical truths. We often talk about Holy Spirit as our comforter and as our comforter, the Holy Spirit or the parakaleo, as it said in Greek, or the one who comes alongside not only comforts us, but he exhorts or encourages us to do something, ladies and gentlemen. God uses people. This is why my counseling class on Monday nights is so important because God uses biblical or Christian counselors to help guide people with the word of God. They're not going to use their personal opinion. They're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. They're going to be guided by the word of God in everything that they do to serve the people. And so there's really no need to be confused. There's really no need to be afraid. There's really no need to be anxious about anything. As Paul says, be anxious for nothing when you let the Holy Spirit lead. Somebody said, because God says so this morning. When you let the Holy Spirit lead, you don't have to be anxious about the purchase. You don't be, have to be anxious about the commitment. You don't have to be anxious about any decision that you make when you let the Lord lead. And one of the ways that Cornelius and Peter in Acts chapter 10 was able to hear clearly and were able to receive the vision because these men had a consistent life of prayer. How is it that you're going to receive a, a clear, clearly from God? You got to have a consistent prayer life. Believer, you got to have a consistent prayer life. I, I can't say I'm a believer and I'm a leader in the Lord's church and not have a consistent prayer life because if we're not praying, then we're leading people based on our flesh. And the flesh has got to die if you're going to serve God effectively, ladies and gentlemen. The flesh has got to die if you're going to make decisions based on what God is saying. The flesh has got to die if you're going to, if you're going to trust in the Lord and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and trust him to direct your path. Look at your neighbor this morning and tell them if you're going to hear from God, if you're going to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, if you're going to get out of your feelings, somebody write this down. The flesh has got to die. Let's take a quick break for station ID. My subject this morning is because God said so. And we're looking at Acts chapter 16, helping people understand the importance of letting the Holy Spirit guide their decisions. We're live on WHLJ 97.5 FM, Statenville, Valdosta, Moultrie, Georgia. You can also join us online this morning at Foxy, F-O-X-Y 97.com. And you can also join us on the conference call at 267-807-9611, access code 266-590. And we're also back on Facebook Live after two weeks off <laughs> this morning. Like and share if you're on Facebook. I want to encourage you this morning to be just like Cornelius, to be just like Peter, and to be just like Paul in these situations. When God reveals something to you, whether it's through a vision, a dream, however he speaks, let the Holy Spirit lead. A lot of times we want things to change overnight. We, we get impatient with our situation. We're tired of the way things are. And some people even get impatient with God. And so we move out of anxiety. We move uh, because we're struggling emotionally. We move and, and ladies and gentlemen, out of uh, uh, appre we're apprehensive or, or so anxious about this that we move prematurely. But you don't have to move prematurely when you let the Holy Spirit lead. On this journey, while Paul wanted to go one way, which was not a bad thing, it was a good thing to want to preach the gospel anywhere. There are moments when you have to decide, is this a good thing? Is this good thing a God thing? It would, would have been good to preach in Asia, but they were forbidden and given clarity and clearance to go to Macedonia. This is what the Lord is saying. He wanted them to preach. And here's a decision making nugget that I want you to write down this morning. Before you make a move on anything, Make sure God has given you clearance. It is okay to wait on God. You are not wasting time waiting on God because his timing is always right. I need you to write that down. You are not wasting time waiting on God because his timing is always right, ladies and gentlemen. On their journey, they, in, they encounter Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth, an entrepreneur, a Gentile woman who feared but had not yet been converted. On this journey to Macedonia, they discover why the Lord needed them to go this way. 
It's, it was, it didn't mean that the, at some point the other ministry was, wasn't necessary, but in this particular timing, I need you to go another way. And ladies and gentlemen, had they gone the way they wanted to go and not been allowed the Holy Spirit to lead and order their steps, they would have missed this moment with Lydia, this entrepreneur, a Gentile woman who feared but had not yet been converted. On that day and because Paul's steps were ordered by the Lord, this woman and her family believed and were baptized, ladies and gentlemen. On this same journey, they encountered a slave girl who was possessed with a spirit of divination, which enabled her to be a successful fortune teller, making a lot of money for her owners, ladies and gentlemen. She followed Paul and his crew around the city for days saying a good thing. These men are the servants of the Most High God who proclaimed to us the way of salvation. Paul became annoyed and said to the spirit, ladies and gentlemen, not to the slave girl, but to the spirit that was speaking. Uh, listen, because all the what she was saying was not bad, nor was it wrong. It was coming from the wrong spirit. <laughs> Fortune tellers have the ability to tell things about you that may be true, but their source is not the Holy Spirit and their motive is always money. Let me say that again. Fortune tellers have the ability to tell things because the enemy pervert wants to pervert what God is doing. So fortune tellers have the ability to tell things about you that may be true. Psychics have the ability to tell things about you that might be true. Um, um, I don't even want to deal with mediums this morning, but their source is not the Holy Spirit and their motive is always going to be about money. Their source is Satan and the motivation is almost always about money. Just because someone says they are spiritual does not mean that what they're doing is of God. Let me say that again for those who are <laughs> spiritualist, <laughs> but they're not serving God. Just because someone says something is spiritual does not mean that they are in God. Come on, somebody. People today attempt to connect to their own spirituality through yoga, being one with nature, burning, uh, th doing things to try to ward off bad energy. How did Paul deal with what the new age thinkers would call bad energy? He didn't burn no sage. He rebuked the spirit, ladies and gentlemen. I need you to wake somebody up live at five this morning and tell them to stop listening to this new age teaching and get back to the Bible, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible way is still right. I want somebody to be encouraged. Demons can still get rebuked. Come on, somebody. Some people can't think straight because they have opened themselves up to demonic spirits having battles in their mind. And some of us need to be like Paul and go home and tell some spirits to come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Leave and never come back again. I need you to look at your neighbor say because God said so that girl got delivered because of Paul's obedience to go the way that the Lord told him to go it may be a good thing but is it God that girl would not have got delivered. Lydia's family would not have believed been baptized had Paul went the way he wanted to go I need you to hear me clearly look at the text and look at how God ordered their steps so that people can get delivered, so that people can believe and be baptized. The late John Lewis talked about getting in some good trouble. And after Paul helps this girl get delivered, her owners were not happy because she was making money for them. They were not happy and they dragged Paul before the chief magistrate and accused him and the people with him of creating a disturbance. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you listen, you're going to make the devil mad when you do it God's way. And it's okay. You, you're going to make the devil mad when you're doing it God's way, but it's okay because God is going to see you through this. They didn't care about the message. They were offended with the messenger. I need somebody to shout amen. They did not care about the message. They didn't even care that people got delivered. They were offended with the messenger. People who once used you will be offended at God delivering you. Come on, somebody. Most people are not mad because you go to church. They are offended that you got delivered and they can't 
can't use you anymore. The drug dealer will be offended when you get delivered because they can't profit off you anymore. The pimp will be offended when you get delivered because they won't be able to use you anymore. Since your boyfriend's still mad because you got delivered from low self-esteem and rejection and low self-worth and now he can't use and abuse you anymore. Listen, for those of you in ministry, when people are offended, then listen, that's just one way you know you're being affected. In Paul's case, they drug him, they beat him, and they put him in prison. But prison didn't stop Paul's praise. Somebody shout amen. They were in, in, in a place in the inner prison, what we would call the dungeon, in the darkest place in the prison. Listen, I know you may feel like you're in a dark place right now. I know where you are is uncomfortable right now. I know you may be trying to figure out why God led you to this place where you've been mistreated and abused, but don't you let that dark place rob you of real joy. We talked about joy unspeakable the other week in our ministry. The lady spoke about joy. I want to encourage you that even though you may be in a place that's uncomfortable, don't let that uncomfortable place rob you of joy. Paul didn't let it stop his praise. Don't you let it stop yours. It may seem dark right now, but when God orders your steps, your future is looking real bright. I need somebody to write that down. It may seem dark right now. It may be uncomfortable right now, but when the Lord is ordering your steps, your future is looking real bright there was a purpose for where they were positioned there was a purpose for where they were positioned the text doesn't say they were discouraged the text doesn't say they blame god here's what the text says in acts chapter 16 verses 25 through 28 and at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto god and the prisoners heard them and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed the bible says in verse number 27 and the keeper of the prison awakening out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open he drew out his sword and would have killed himself supposing that the prisoners had been fled but paul cried with a loud voice saying do thyself no harm for we are all here Instead of questioning why, I need somebody to be like Pastor Glory more right and give God an anyhow praise. Come on, somebody. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually, consistently, all the time be in my mouth. How do we know the place where we, watch this now. How do we know the place they were in was dark? Because in verse 29, because the jailer who wanted to kill himself, he called for a light. He called for a light the bible says the man who was on the verge of suicide was looking to be saved come on somebody god allowed them to turn a dark moment into a an evangelistic opportunity everything you encounter believer including those moments that seem unfair including those moments that seem uncomfortable it's an opportunity to lead someone else to jesus christ be careful about how you talk to people on the phone because that can be your opportunity. Be mindful of how you treat people in the grocery store. That could be your opportunity. Yesterday, we reminded the people that Jesus gave a command to go ye into all the world. And no matter what you're going through, ladies and gentlemen, you when you encounter people, that's your opportunity to get out of what you're feeling and show them a better way. The jailer observed these men who were in prison unjustly. Praise God in spite of their situation. Can I get somebody to praise God on Facebook Live this morning, no matter what you're going through? Can I get somebody to give God praise on the call, no matter what you're going through? Can I get somebody to give God glory this morning, no matter what you're going through? Listen, the jailer observed these men who were put in prison, in the darkest place of the prison. He observed them giving God praise. Listen, Lydia came to know Jesus in a more intimate way because Paul and Silas obeyed God. A woman 
and with the spirit of divination was delivered because Paul and Silas obeyed God and a jailer and his family's life was transformed by the power of God because Paul and Silas did what the Lord told them to do. I need somebody to write this down because God said so this morning. Because God said so. Several things we can learn from this lesson. What Number one, whatever you set out to do, don't make a move without clearance from God. Number two, while Paul and Silas ended up in jail, eventually they got to got released. Whatever God allows you to go through, eventually look at your neighbor and say, I'm coming out. My former apostle James Brown would tell you the only way out is through. I need somebody to say because God said so. The third thing I want us to understand from this text in Acts 16 is that when God is ordering your steps where he sends you is always going to be fruitful. When God is ordering your steps, what he tells you to do is always going to prosper. When God is ordering your steps, whatever he tells you to do is always, there's always going to be a blessing in it, either for you or the people he sends you to. When God wants you to do something in the earth, when God wants to do something in the earth, he uses people. He uses people. He uses people. He uses you. This is why Jesus said, go into all the world because he wants to use you. This is why the Bible says, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because he wants to use you. This is why Acts 1 and 8 says, Jesus says, and ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses. Why? Because the Lord wants to use you and you go without having to explain because God says so. You ain't even got to tell people that. When God tells you to move, just move. Because God says so and make sure it's God. Because when you know that it's God, that there shouldn't be any disagreement. Prophet spoke to me some time ago, and I want to share this brief testimony. I've shared it before. I'm going to share it again to help somebody. In 2021, in the spring, in prayer, remember Cornelius was praying when the Lord gave him a vision. Peter was praying when the Lord gave him a vision. Uh, Paul and Silas, the Lord gave them a vision. I was in prayer. After command your morning, I went into my prayer room. I didn't ask for it. Cornelius and Peter didn't ask for it. But the Lord gave me a vision to do something in the community to bring the churches together. Because a lot of the churches had not been in a corporate gathering assembled since March of 2020. So in prayer, he gave me this vision. And I called my armor bearer at the time and she ran with it when people know your character they know you are a person of prayer they know you hear from god when you reveal what god has revealed to you they run with it write the vision make it plain upon tables that they may run who reads it when you are a person of prayer and people know your character they know you and you tell them what god is revealing to you they will run with it and this is what happened. The ministry ran with it. And, and it became a rise encounter. And a rise encounter. I said, I, I did what the Lord told me to do, Brother Kenneth. I said, if anybody, I did what God told me to do. If somebody else wants to pick it up, they can take it. They can pick it up. They can carry it. I did what God told me to do because God said so. And because God said so, somebody picked up the, somebody, the, the mantle was passed. And now a rise encounter because God said do something that, that I didn't even know the location when he first gave it to me. Over time, the Lord revealed the location for a rise encounter one. And because we obeyed God, because the people got on board, because the people heard the vision and they knew that it had to be God. Now a rise encounter, it, listen, it started Kingdom Rally, an annual a worship experience where churches come together. It, it started the, the youth ministry that gathers every quarter. It started a rise encounter has continued every year since 2021. I want to encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, not everyone is going to be happy about your decision 
decision to do things God's way. But if you feel, watch this now, but if you feel the need to explain why, just tell them because God said so. Because God says so, one church, that's it, Lakeisha, we have one church right now where pastors in the city of Waycross and Blackshear are coming together because God gave one person a vision. I want to encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, listen, God, watch this. Now, it starts with one, with one person walking in obedience to what God said. And that one person walking in obedience can, listen, can, can set off an amazing encounter. Come on, somebody. People are going to criticize your decisions and the gossip committee is going to be on 10. But listen, but you, listen, but you don't have to give justification as long as you're doing it, doing what you're doing because God says so. You may not even understand why God said to go another way. As Peter didn't fully understand the vision that God gave him to rise, kill, and eat. He didn't understand it at first, but he understood it later. Ladies and gentlemen, the old mothers would tell you this morning, you may not understand it now, but you understand it by and by. Come on, somebody. You understand. Come on, somebody. He gave you the authority. And it was up to me to use it. Thank you, Brother Mobley. It was up to me to use it. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, he gave you the authority. What are you going to do with what God gave you? He gave you the authority to go. Are you going to sit back and wait on people to tell you what to do? Are you going to go with God? Come on, somebody. Are you going to sit back and think about it for a few days? Or are you going to obey God? Come on. Are you going to sit back and ponder this thing? Or are you going to obey God? Listen, you see, you may not even understand why God said go another way. And you may not know what lies ahead, but trust that wherever you go, wherever God sends you, God is with you because of your determination to do it because God said so. I need somebody to be encouraged. I, I got, listen, I can give more testimonies, but we don't have time about what happens when you obey God, even in some financial decisions. Had we not obeyed God, we'd probably still be deep in some things, in some financial issues right now. But we listened to God and we didn't have peace with investing in a certain piece of property. And because God didn't give us the clearance, we couldn't sign the papers. I'm telling you, your, I said this yesterday, having a consistent prayer life, there is a correlation between our prayer life and receiving instructions from God. There are moments that because of your prayer life, God will, will, will reveal things to you and give you instructions you didn't ask for. Listen, we go to God and oftentimes we're asking him for something. But how often do we just be still in his presence and wait on instructions? We go to God so often asking for something. Get get ready to pray, uh, uh, Pastor, uh, uh, Prophetess Inga Reed. Oftentimes we go to God asking, making requests, and that's okay because the Bible says we have not because we ask not. But how often do we be? Are we still in the presence of God, wait, letting Him give us instructions, letting Him download instructions? And there are some things that God will instruct you to do that you didn't ask for, but because God said so, He'll make provision for what He told you to do to get done. Why did I share this message today? Because I want us to understand the importance of doing it God's way. I want us to understand the importance of letting the Holy Spirit lead and guide our financial uh, uh, ministry, relationships, whatever the decision, let the Holy Spirit lead. And if you feel the need to explain, all you have to do is say, because God said so. And you gotta know, not believe or think, but know that it was God. 
God bless you. God keep you. Heaven smile upon you. Glory to God this morning. Listen, I want to encourage you to join us on the prayer line as Prophetess Reed gets ready to take us in with prayer. I'm getting ready to close Facebook Live, but I'm going to close with giving you the number to call in at 267-807-9611. Access code 266-590. Join us on the call. We're getting ready to go into prayer with Prophetess Inga Reed of Manifest Christian Cathedral, Columbus, Ohio. But let me close with 1 John chapter 5, verses 4 and 5. For every child of God, defeats this evil world and we achieve this victory through our faith and who can win this battle against the world only those who believe that jesus is the son of god for those who believe this morning i encourage you to declare i win i am victorious and if you feel the need to explain what you're doing all you have to do is say because god said so god bless you god keep you prophetess inquiry